So, in the show, in the books of Game of Thrones, the setting for most part is in Westeros. The only time we really get to see Essos was in Daenerys' and Arya's story. But Essos is massive. Like, if Westeros is England, Essos is all of Europe and Asia. It's just a wall of land. So today, I'm going to be talking about the major places in Essos. And I mean all of Essos. Uh, and just letting y'all know, I will be mispronouncing some words. <coughs> I'm stupid, alright? <laughs> and I apologize for doing so. So, let's get started with the free cities. Bravos, Mir, Pentos, Volantis, Loreth, Lys, Tyrosh, Norvos, and Cohor are the nine independent city-states located on the western coast on the Narrow Sea and are known as the Free Cities. With the exception of Bravos, all of these were colonies of the Valyrian Freehold before the Doom. Bravos is known for its ships, the Iron Bank, the Faceless Men, which is an Assassin's Guild, and the Titan of Bravos statue, and it's uh, ruled by a Sea Lord. Loreth is the northernmost city and is the smallest, poorest, and most isolated of the three cities. The next one is Lys. It is on an uh, island near the southern coast and is known for its pleasure houses, training slaves in the art of love and then selling them. That's their economy, basically. Next is Meyer. It's known for its arts and learning, and it's considered to be the most advanced of the free cities. Basically, they, pri uh, they pride themselves on their sophistication. Next is Norvos, a large city that has two parts, one atop a high hill and the other by a low river. It has three large bells, each with its own name and sound that it makes, and these bells govern every aspect of city life. Next is Pentos, a major trading port on the western coast of Essos. Dothraki come here often and the Pentoshi people are spared much of the raid because they pay tribute to their cause. This is also where Daenerys' and Viserys Targaryen's story arc started at the start of the series. Uh, next is Kohor. Is known for its fine tapestries and its smiths who have the rare ability to reforge Valyrian steel. This is where the Unsullied came from, and they act as the city guard. It's been like that since, ever since 3,000 Unsullied soldiers um, successfully defended the city from a Kalazar of uh, 20,000. Tyrosh is known for its greed. Everything there is very expen uh, expensive, especially slaves, weapons, and armor. As well as even designing armor and whatnot. And lastly, Volantis. It's the oldest and proudest of the free cities, and the only people who can trace their lineage back to old Valyria can live there. Each city uh, is more developed than any city in Westeros, and that includes King's Landing. Uh, their region extends uh, from the western coastline to the forest of Kohor and the mighty river Rhoyne in the east, which separates them from the Dothraki Sea and the kingdom of Sarnar. Uh, in between Bravos and Pentos are the hills of Andalus, the ancient homeland of the Andals, and according to legends, the source of the faith of the Seven. Next, we have the Kingdom of Sarnar. This is a region of northern Essos along the shores of the Shivering Sea. Most of this kingdom was destroyed by the Dothraki uh, in the Century of Blood following the Doom. This was just a period of pure chaos that lasted for about a hundred years. This happened because with uh, Valyria now gone, it left a power vacuum in Essos. Um, and I could do an entire video over this time period, so I'm just going to move on before I get too into it. Uh, out of the 11 cities that made up this kingdom, only one survives today, Soth. Uh, Ceres, Mardosh, uh, Kaith, Harnoth, Raithlar, Sarnath, uh, Kasath, Sather, Gornath, and Salash were all apparently destroyed by the Dothraki. Um, 
At the height before this century of blood, they were a strong kingdom that aided the rising Valyrian freehold against the ancient Gascari Empire in their second and third wars against each other, but stayed out of the first, fourth, and fifth wars. In ancient times, it's said that there are two gods people here worshipped, and Cassie, the spider goddess, and Sion, the serpent god. For thousands of years, the acolytes of both space would war against each other, and Cassie is the one who haunts dreams, brings down death and destruction, the trickster and god of deceit, the one who brings the plague and seeks chaos, and takes the form of a giant black spider. Sion is the least tangible of the gods, the most elusive, the all-seeing eye, the god that gifts its believers the sight to see beyond the natural world and into the afterlife. It's also said that those who worship Sion can speak to the dead and grant immortality. 5,000 years later, the two faiths have fallen and the people there worship the 100 gods. Basically, no religion is outlawed and you can believe in whatever you want. Putting in more uh, stake in techn technological advancements than religion. Next is the Shivering Sea. Uh, this is the sea north of Essos and is uh, and has that name suggests it's frigid and very cold. It's home to hundreds of varieties of fish as well as norwals, seals, walruses, sea lions, and several whale species, including the Leviathan, a massive prehistoric whale. But those might not be the biggest things living in or and around the sea. Tales of ice dragons living there are plentiful. They are said to be twice the size of the Valyrian dragons, like Valyrian, uh, made of living ice. They have pale blue crystal eyes, vast translucent wings, and they breathe ice. Tales also say there are, light, uh, there are lights that shimmer in the night sky, kind of like the northern lights, uh, where the demon mother of ice giants dances eternally, seeking to lure men to their doom. There's also Cannibal Bay, up there by the lands of always winter, uh, where sh ships enter only to find themselves trapped forever as the sea behind them mysteriously freezes. Thousands of ships full of men have apparently been lost here as the men resort to cannibalism. There is a theory out there that believe, that says that white walkers are behind it. Who knows though. There's also tales of mermaids. Pale blue mists. Uh, so cold they can freeze entire ships when they pass them. Drowned spirits that are said to rise at night to drag the living down into the depths. They have pale skin and a black-scaled tail and are said to be more evil than their southern counterparts. This sea is incredibly harsh and is said to swallow ships tr trying to explore north. And the east of the Shivering Sea is the Thousand Islands, a series of 300 small islands. The people there are hairless with greenish skin, speak an unknown language, and absolutely fear the sea. Some believe there are remnants of a drowned kingdom that was submerged by the rising sea thousands of years ago. There's a, there, they are also said to sacrifice sailors to fish-headed gods. And even the fish there are said to be misshapen with a bitter and unpleasant taste. Next is the Dothraki Sea. This is a vast grassland region of the continent controlled by the Dothraki. Before the Century of Blood, it was considered by Master Yandel as the birthplace of civilization, but we'll never know as the kingdoms of the grass rose and fell before writing was invented, so nothing was ever documented. We only have tales and legends, like it's believed that the first men and the Andals got their start here. There's also tales of the hairy men, men that were covered in hair, massive in size, uh, uh, savage, savages who rode into battle on unicorns. Yeah. Uh, but by the time the century of blood was over, any resemblance of civilization was left and ruined by the Dothraki. 
There is only one inhabitable city, Vase Dothrak. It lies at the heart of the sea and is home for the Dothraki. Over 100 types of grass grow here, um, growing thick and taller than a man's head. And from afar, it looks like a sea as the grass rolls like waves in the breeze. Uh, the grass is also inhabited by packs of wild dogs, jackals, herds of free-ranging horses, and the rare Harakar, which is a type, is a breed of rare white lion. Next, the, the Valyrian Peninsula. At one point in time, this was home to one of the most powerful kingdoms in Essos, the Valyrian Freehold, and where ancient city of Valyria was at. This city was very technologically advanced and held many treasures like Valyrian steel and magical items and artifacts. And it was ruled by dragon lords who also practiced blood magic and other dark arts. However, about 400 years ago, the doom of Valyria ensued as a massive cataclysmic volcanic eruption happened. All 14 volcanoes surrounding the city, also known as the 14 fires, erupted at once, destroying the city, almost every dragon, and even the peninsula itself as it split up into little islands. It's also now covered in a thick layer of smoke known as the Smoking Sea. Now the ruins of Valyria is one of the most dangerous places in the world. It's considered to be demon haunted and rife with poisonous fumes. Everyone has gone there seeking old Valyria's treasures either never return or shortly died after. One of the dragon lords who had survived the doom, Orion, declared himself the emperor of Valyria. He rode on his dragon and led an army of 30,000 to retake Valyria, but None of them returned. They just disappeared. In the year 54 AC, after the conquest, Princess Arya Targaryen went there uh, on the dragon Balerion the Black Dread to recover lost treasure and whatnot. She just got on there and just disappeared one day. They returned a year later, and Arya was dying. <laughs> she was stick thin with bloody eyes, a fever you could feel through armor, and something was crawling underneath her skin. The Septon described her as burning with red skin that was getting darker, and smoke was coming out of her nose, mouth, and nether regions. When she was submerged in a tub of ice, uh, slimy, unspeakable things burst from her body, one as long as an arm, and yeah, she definitely died. Uh, even Balerion the Black Dread had new wounds and scars from the trip. Later, Tommen II Lannister also went there and never returned, losing the Lannister ancestral sword Bright Roar in the process. Now, Euron Greyjoy claims to have ventured there safely and even found a dragon horn there, a magical horn that supposedly allows him to control dragons. But there's no proof of, of that, and this horn, while having Valyrian hieroglyphs on it, could have came from any of the free cities. And I'm not going to trust the word of Euron Greyjoy without real proof. Uh, I know the show didn't stay true to like the books. I know they went on and did the rest of the show without finishing the books first, but it didn't pop up in the show. And I don't see any proof of him actually going there and getting this uh, horn that you see right here. So, I'm not going to believe him. Next, we have Slaver's Bay. It was built from the ashes of the old em Empire of Gis, or the Giscari Empire, which was a powerful empire that ruled over much of Essos until their fall to the Valyrian Freehold 5,000 years ago. Based on its name, you can guess how it got its wealth. It was very wealthy for their slave trading. There's three cities here who all got their wealth this way. Astapor, Yunkai, and Marine. They lived this way for thousands of years until Daenerys Targaryen became queen there and freed the slaves. I'm not sure how they're doing now that Danny is dead, but anyways, you get it. Uh, Saber's Bay is also known for their pit fighting, and it plays a big part in their culture. People literally fight to the death for honor, recognition, and to entertain the people watching. 
Anyone can fight in these, from slaves, knights, and priests, Dothraki, and sellswords. Some infamous fighters to ever participate in these um, are Dario Naharis and Prince Oberyn Martell. While the Giscari Empire is gone, people there still use its culture like the Giscari language and harpy emblem with each city having their own variation of the harpy emblem. In Astapor, the emblem has chains in the harpy's talons. In Yunkai, the harpy has a whip in its talons. Uh, we know Marine has its own variation of the emblem. We just don't know exactly what it looks like. So, there you go. Next, we have uh, Lazar. This place is a semi-arid lands of pastures and hills located southeast of the Dothraki Sea and northeast of Slaver's Bay. The Lazarian people are considered by the horse lords to be good slaves for sheep herding and call them lamb men. This place is made up of three cities, Hesh, Lazosh, and Korsrak. Uh, the Lazarian people look similar, similar like the Dothraki, but they have a more flat face uh, and short black hair and are just simply peaceful shepherds. They serve a deity they call the Great Shepherd. Uh, they are taught that all men are one flock and the Great Shepherd has a temple in Bravos. The next three I'm just going to group together. Those are the Bone Mountains, the Great Sand Sea, and the Red Waste. The Bone Mountains, also called the Bones, are a colossal mountain range in the center of Essos, the biggest one in the known world, and it acts as a natural land barrier between the western and eastern Essos. Um, there are only three routes through the Bones, large enough for entire armies to pass through. The Steer Road, which is the most northerly road, and it's got its name for all the battles that happen in its vicinity. And the other two are the Stone and Sand Roads. These mountains were named after the multitude of bones left behind by creatures attempting to traverse the range. The Red Waste is just west of the Bone Mountains. And it is just a massive desert that is a barren and unforgiving landscape of stunted trees, devil grass, and ancient ruins. This was the, dev the desert that D uh, Daenerys Targaryen led her small Khalazar through before getting to Karth uh, in the main series. Uh, one of her blood riders apparently saw a dragon skeleton too, so that's pretty cool. The Red Waste is home to little to no life and has been shaped by sandstorms. Just east of the Bone Mountains is the Great Sand Sea, which is just a desert valley. Some maesters believe a great inland sea was once there. In between uh, here and the Bone Mountains live three fortified cities. And I'm going to but butcher these pronunciations, so don't kill me. Kaya Kaya Naya. Uh, Baya Sabad and Samarina. Uh, Samarina. Yeah. These cities are ruled by the Great Fathers, and their daughters are trained from an early age to be fierce warriors, as it's believed that only the ones that give birth are permitted to take life. Most men are gelded when they reach manhood, you know, they get snippied, and become farmers, cooks, craftsmen, priests, etc. One out of a hundred men will be allowed to keep his, you know what, and his, you know, and to mate with one of the fierce warriors. These men joined the great fathers too. Karth is an ancient city that is home to warlocks and merchant princesses. Uh, they are very, very wealthy and pride themselves on their sophistication. Uh, it became so wealthy due to its control of the Jade Gates, which connect the Summer and Jade Seas. Because of its location, it's seen as a gateway of commerce and culture between the east and west of Essos. Karth claims to be the birthplace of civilization, but maesters are skeptical. Ancient Karth was once ruled by kings and queens, but are now uh, ruled by a uh, ol oligarchy. Some notable places there are the House of the Undying, Hall of a Thousand Thrones, and the Temple of Memory. Karth is also surrounded by three massive walls for defense, 
uh, and while they haven't been needed in thousands of years, they stand as strong as ever. Um, this south of uh, Karth is an island known as Great Morocco, and it's the largest known island uh, in the world. West of this island is uh, are the islands Vahar and Lesser Morocco, while to the south is the Isle of Elephants. The northern half of the island is filled with plains, hills, and small forests, while the southern half is just a dense forest. Next is just eastern Essos. Not much is known about the lands east of the Bone Mountains, but here's what we know. What you're seeing now are the plains of Jagos Nai. These are just plains that are east of the Great Sand Sea and the Howling Hills and are home to the Jagos Nai. They're similar to the Dothraki. They're a race of nomadic mounted warriors that ride horses, which I'm assuming are zebra horse hybrids, although I couldn't find that anywhere. Um, these plains are drier and less fertile than the Dothraki Sea. Uh, but they are just like the Dothraki. Just like them. Um, uh, Ibn is an island north of Essos in the Shivering Sea. The Ibanese people are often referred to as the men of Ib. Um, gold, iron, and tin mining in the island's mountains, as well as trading with Bravos, Volantis, Lorath, and the Summer Isles, are the driving forces in their economy. Dragon bones have been found here, and playing dragons once lived there. For centuries, this island was ruled by a god king, and at least 100 of them ruled during its history. But following the doom of Valyria, the last one was overthrown. They are now ran by the Shadow Council, a group of people who are chosen by the Thousand. Another group of people that include wealthy guildsmen, ancient nobles, priests, and priestesses. And now we get into the Golden Empire of Yi Ti. It is a massive nation east of Karth. The land of Yi Ti has thick grown patch farmlands and dense sweltering jungles that supposedly basilisks roam. These are venomous six-legged reptiles that can be twice the size of a male lion. So pretty big. And they live in the jungles. Um, Yi Ti has more cities than any other nation, kingdom, or empire in the known world or that has ever existed, And are apparently more splendid and much bigger than cities anywhere else. Cities include Yin, Jinki, Tikwai and Asabad. Currently, the capital city is Yen, and the Emperor Bugai lives there. The capital city changes depending on where the Emperor lives. <laughs> the city of Sikwo was built in the middle of the jungle and has since been abandoned and been reclaimed by the jungle. The five forts are five massive forts that can house 10,000 men and are along the northeastern boundaries of E.T. to guard the Golden Empire from raiders from the Great Waste. These forts predate E.T. and no one really knows why or when they were built. Some believe they were built by the Pearl Emperor at the time of the Great Empire of Dawn to defend against the demons of the Lion of Night. And the Great Empire of the Dawn is what the city was called before the Long Night. I'm getting to that. A dozen cities and a hundred towns have been reduced to ruins by the Jagos Nai uh, in the last 2,000 years. E.T. is one of the oldest civilizations, having existed for the last 8,000 years, and where others like the Valyrian Freehold and the Giscari Empire have fallen, E.T. still thrives. There are many gods in their religion, but the two major ones are the Lion of Night and the Maiden Maid of Light, these two guys. According to legend, their child was the first god emperor, the god on earth. He ruled over the city for 10,000 years before ascending into the heavens. His eldest son, the Pearl Emperor, uh, ruled for about a thousand years. This continued for thousands of years, with each reign lasting for centuries, but shorter than the previous one. Uh, th this guy is the Pearl Emperor. The last one, the Bloodstone Emperor, who usurped his sister, practiced dark magic and necromancy. And apparently all of that is what caused the first long night. 
I'm going to do a video over the first long night to explain this more in depth, but you get the gist. Uh, and during the Long Night, the Great Empire of the Dawn collapsed, and from it, the Golden Empire of E.T. rose. Fun fact, Emperor Bugai's palace alone, just his palace, the place where he lives, is bigger than all of King's Landing. One building, bigger than all of King's Landing. What the heck. Next, we have Ashai. This is a mysterious port city in the far southeast of the known part of Essos and on the southernmost edge of the mountainous peninsula called the Shadowlands. The few people there have ominous reputations as they are well versed in witchcraft and wizardy. They all speak their own language and everyone wears masks or veils. And no one practice is forbidden here. People here practice all sorts of stuff. Uh, spell singing, aromancing, god's wives, necromancy, pyromancy, blood maging, uh, etc. And worshippers of the black goat, the main god worshipped in Quohor, uh, the Bacalon, the god of death that's worshipped in Bravos and Lys, and the lion of night are free to worship them here. The history of Ashai has been lost to time. Even the people there don't know who built it. They just know a city stood there at the start of this world, and it will stand there until it ends. There's ancient texts about Azor Ahai and the Long Night, and some others say this is where dragons first appeared. And there's also a group of people there known as shadow shadowbenders or binders, and their magic allows them to bend shadows to do their own will. And it's, there's a theory that this is the type of magic uh, Melisandre used to kill Renly Baratheon. Um, and, the, and the far eastern side of Essos that we know about is called the Shadowlands, a mountainous region, uh, also known as the Shadow. A ghost grass grows throughout this region, and it's taller than a person sitting on a horse and is very pale. It's said that demons and dragons live in the caves in the mountains. The corpse city of Stagai lies at the heart of the shadow. And even the shadow binders of Ashai fear that place. People that live in the shadow are called shadow men. They cover themselves in tattoos and wear these red wooden masks. Ancient tales from Ashai say that dragons originated from the shadow and were first tamed by people so ancient they didn't have names. That's it. That's all I'm covering over Essos. I know I didn't talk about everywhere in Essos, like the Lingai people on the island of Ling, or the Andals, or the Roinar, but I think y'all get the gist. There's just a lot of places there, a lot of different people there, and I'm not going to spend an hour talking about them since they don't have a lot to talk about. There's not a lot known about them. Um, there are also a lot of extinct or vanished cultures, like the Jahagwin, the Maze Makers, and the Ephiquiron. I probably butchered that last word, but oh well. Um, and that's it for my video. I hope you guys like and subscribe if you did. Leave a comment of what you think. And hit the notification bell to be notified of all my future videos and all the great stuff. I truly do appreciate it. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace!